Well, let me tell you this, man. The shotgun is perhaps the most important weapon in Fortnite. In almost every close range encounter, the shotgun is the weapon that you absolutely need if you want to win the fight. Here we are yet again after another major update to controller aiming, desperately trying to find the right sensitivity and it's all thanks to Epic. After the major launch of Season 3 Chapter 2, controller players all around the world almost instantly felt the difference in aim assist. I feel like I don't have very much aim assist either, I was gonna ask. Epic had yet again made another significant change to one of the most important mechanics in the game. And this one is by far, guys, like one of the most damaging. With such a hard nerf on the aim assist strength, controller sensitivities that were usually easy to control have become much harder to aim and hit high damage shots with, mainly due to how the aim assist nerf makes it so that your shots just roll off more and have a tendency to not be on target. And all of this makes us wonder, what is the new best controller sensitivity meta? Is it exponential? Is it linear? And what range is the new sensitivity meta in? So in this video today, we're going to be going over the best controller sensitivities and settings to regain that once amazing aim that most of us controller players once had. Bunch of Crunch Army! Here we go, it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, you better scream this out. Here we go. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that Bunch of Crunch! Woo! Let's get this going. Here we go. It is so funny that we're talking about improving rapidly because one of the recent ways that Fortnite has actually attempted to improve their game rapidly is by removing the pump shotgun. And boy, oh boy, does this affect controller sensitivities. Now, you're probably wondering, how does the removal of one gun and the addition of another to replace it affect aiming and sensitivity, like as a whole? Well, let me tell you this, man. The shotgun is perhaps the most important weapon in Fortnite. In almost every close range encounter, the shotgun is the weapon that you absolutely need if you want to win the fight. Whether you have a P90 or the drum gun, it doesn't really matter Like if you're going up against a player with a good aim and a charged shotgun. And the same goes for the pump. Both of these weapons can finish a fight in a millisecond with a quick 200 plus shot to the head, which is what makes it such an incredibly important weapon in this game. Now, Fortnite has made the decision to actually remove the pump and instead put it in the charged shotgun, which is a more delayed weapon that slows down, you know, the flow of fights. And the major issue this brings up is timing and speed. Yeah, two things which are absolutely tied to sensitivities, especially for controller players. Pretty much throughout all 12 seasons of Fortnite, before season 3 of chapter 2, you know, we've always had a shotgun with a fast pull out time and instant shoot, right? But for the first time ever, this is no longer the case thanks to the charged shotgun. And this makes it so important to be able to turn, build, and edit faster than before because you need to make up for the delay that the charged shotgun has. So this new controller sensitivity meta has to be applied if players want to be able to keep up with everybody else as they start to learn the skill gap. And as of now, the skill gap isn't really too large yet, mainly because many people are still learning how to perfect their sensitivities and use them with this new gun. But our video is gonna change all of that, and we're gonna be teaching you guys the skill gap directly so that everybody watching is now one step ahead of everybody else. I hope you guys are ready for this. So let's get into the new meta and how you can find your perfect sensitivity. Let's get it. Now, speaking of sensitivity, okay, it's often very hard to find the right one. So if you like a coach to help you guys, hey, you guys got to check out ProGuides.com where we have the best coaches in the entire world, man. Sign up for our membership and get access to master courses and live classes. Link is in the description. So the main thing that we always say, and we're gonna continue to put emphasis on, especially in this video, is that there is no perfect sensitivity that's gonna work amazingly for every single player. Like, that's impossible. Everyone has their own play style. Everybody has their own strengths and everybody has their own weaknesses, right? So it's pretty wrong to say that there's one sensitivity that's gonna work amazingly like a magic potion, okay? It's just not gonna happen. Oh my God, no, 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 no. My shotgun wasn't reloaded. <laughs> but don't be upset, my friends, because there is a very, very, very good sensitivity that is a great starting point for all players. You guys ready for this? I hope you are. Here we go. But I do want to say this, you know, the reason for this is because when it comes to controller gameplay, players must be able to actually play in a specific way in order to adjust and adapt to new metas. 
So for this current season, the meta requires a very fast paced building and editing style, but at the same time, a slow and accurate aiming style. Creating this sort of hybrid playstyle where, you know, you're being both fast and slow, like it really helps. Like the best way to explain this is that you need to take your time when placing shots in order to maximize damage. However, man, at the same time, you must make up for the time lost aiming and charging by building and editing faster than ever before. So we've designed this sensitivity that's going to allow for both while also giving a very, very nice starting point to fine tune and change up to your specific needs, okay? Basically, how this is gonna work is that we're gonna tell you guys the God sense, which you will then take and change in order to just suit your specific needs, okay? So here is the ultimate sensitivity for season three. First, make sure that the advanced options is on, all right? Then set both your building and editing sensitivity multiplier to 2.0. Once you've done this, just go ahead and scroll down further until you get to the advanced sensitivity tab where you're gonna find your horizontal and vertical senses, okay? Here, and I mean like right here, you're gonna wanna set it to 45% for horizontal and 42% for vertical, got it? Cool. Why are these two values different? You probably are asking, or maybe not. I'm just gonna tell you. Well, <laughs> to break it down, your vertical sensitivity is going to be largely responsible for aligning headshots and basically getting your crosshair to the right level of the head. The horizontal is critical for looking left and right as well as lining up shots, but the vertical is more important than anything when it comes to getting juicy 200s, okay? Next, you wanna make sure that all boosts are absolutely turned off. During no portion of this video, we're gonna be turning boost on and that's because you know they cause a significant amount of inconsistency when it comes to how well you play over time. Okay, so as you get adjusted and become better with your sensitivity, what happens is, is that your brain starts to get used to the movements that you make and really the very fine adjustments that you're subconsciously making when attempting to do something in game. Boosts are essentially turning acceleration and acceleration adds a bad touch to aiming because honestly, it just really messes with that consistency that aiming should always have. Okay guys, so next we're gonna go down to our ADS sensitivity and we're gonna set it to 0.10 for both horizontal and vertical. Remember that the headshot accuracy still applies when you're ADSing, okay? You want to be able to get the majority of your shots on the head, and it's easier to do so with a slower vertical sensitivity, which is why we're not balancing the initial decrease we made, and we're keeping the ADS the same across horizontal and vertical. Okay, so once again, make sure that all boosts are off, okay, just in case you forgot. And then go ahead and move down to the next section. Okay, so here, we're gonna set our look input curve to linear, got it? And you may be wondering, why linear? Well, why not exponential? Okay, so as we mentioned before, we're trying to be as fast as possible and instantaneous, and no input curve does that better than linear. But what's great about linear and a fact that it's very still, you know, underappreciated is how it has much less natural aim acceleration than exponential. Yes, believe it or not, man, exponential actually has built in aim acceleration, which is why your turning speed exponentially increases the more you turn your analog stick outward. So by setting our setting to linear, we're not only getting more instantaneous and fast turning, but we're also getting much more consistency over time. And I know everybody out here wants consistency, especially me. And of course, we're gonna be setting our aim assist strength to 100%, yeah, like who's not gonna do that? But also make sure that your look dampening time is on zero seconds. This has to do with boost, so we're gonna make sure that it's also off as well. And last, but certainly not least, my friends, we have the infamous dead zones, here we go. Dead zones are probably one of the least well-known aspects of Fortnite, you know, controller aiming. So we're gonna give you a quick rundown of what it is and how it works, and really what's the best one for you. Here we go. Dead zones essentially shut off your controller's response to a certain radius within the analog stick. Meaning, okay, layman's terms, that if I gently push my analog stick to the side and my dead zone is very, very high, my player will not move or turn whatsoever. However, okay, if my dead zone was on 5% on the lowest number possible, even the smallest movements and angles in your analog sticks will register as movement or turning in game. So what is the perfect dead zone? Good question, everybody wants to know. Well, this one is actually completely based off of you, it really is, but there is a few golden rules, okay? So first, make sure that you're always trying to find the lowest dead zone possible. The benefit to having extremely low dead zones is that your controller is much more responsive and you have a large larger range of just motion when aiming. This extra range can make a significant difference in your fine aiming and it could help you a lot with consistency in general. 
But of course, it's almost impossible to have it on the lowest dead zones possible. Simply because the fact that controller built quality tends to include slightly bent analog sticks which will cause unwanted movement and turning in game. So the second rule is to set your dead zones down to 5% and then slowly build it up by 2% until you stop feeling any drift, AKA unwanted movement. Once you've stopped feeling that, go ahead and attempt to decrease your dead zones by one extra percent. And if you can, that's good. And if you can't, don't worry about it, man. You know, this just means that you've already found your perfect dead zones. Okay. So now that we've talked about the strict numbers, let's talk about you. Can we talk about you? Here we go. How can you take that sensitivity that we gave you and turn it into an amazingly fine tuned sensitivity perfect for you? So here's, here's what you got to do. All right. Your motivation guy is here to help you out. Here we go. Start by adjusting it based on how you see yourself first playing with it. Let me ask you this. Do you notice that you're overdoing shots? Or maybe, you know, struggling to keep up and just track opponents. Or maybe this. Maybe you feel as though your aim is too jittery or maybe too hard to handle. Whatever the case may be, you just need to adjust and just make it so that it's perfect for you in your own way. And if it feels too fast, lower it and don't be afraid to customize it to your own needs, okay? So I just want you to remember that everyone is different and you know we all have different strengths and weaknesses. So if you try to play off of someone else's strengths and weaknesses, which are most likely completely different than yours, then you're probably gonna find yourself watching more and more sensitivity videos until you finally find a sensitivity that's decent for you. Or of course, you know, you could do our method and just find the perfect settings and sensitivity for you. What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, Butcher Crunch Army. Man, look, it's time for us to inspire people, man, especially during these times right now, to be great, not only in this game, but also in life, man. It is our job to spread positivity everywhere we go. So, man, I hope you guys keep going, never quit, never surrender.